Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Hackolade tutorial. In today's episode, we'll be talking about how you can use the Hackolade Studio for visually designing your Avro schemas. Avro schemas have been around for quite some time. Um, I believe they've been started at about the time when the Hadoop ecosystem was really emerging. Uh, it was an open source project that basically provides us with a data serialization framework and data exchange services that are compatible with a wide variety of different um, technologies. It's often used with things like uh, Kafka, PubSub pipelines, or with um, data lake storage capabilities. What's important to realize is that the Avro file format is actually a row-oriented object container, as opposed to, for example, Parquet files that have a column-oriented file format. This is important because it might define the workload where you might be applying this type of technology. Um, Avro is typically used in more write-intensive types of operations, whereas Parquet is very often used in more read-intensive operations. The nice thing about Avro is that it's actually language independent, it's quite compact and therefore also quite efficient in its usage. When you develop an Avro schema model using the Hackolade toolset, you will actually see that it's kind of um, like a language agnostic contract for how different systems can interoperate. For every schema, you will find that there are four types of attributes, the type, you know, the specific data type of the JSON record that you are uh, including in the model, the name of the Avro schema that you are defining, the name space, which is the higher level logical indicator of the Avro schema, and then of course all of the individual fields, the individual data elements that you are including here. In the Hackolade Studio, as usual, you will find both an entity relationship representation of this model and a hierarchical representation as you can see in these little graphics. Avro uses JSON to define the schema and the data types that you are uh, going to be using, uh, but it's a little bit different from what the JSON schema typically provides, even though the Avro schema is actually defined using a JSON format. You will see that the container file has a header that contains the schema plus one or more storage blocks. Right, then you can see the composition and the structure of these files in the little uh, overview graphic here on this slide. One of the most powerful capabilities of an Avro schema is that it allows for schema evolution. This is important. You know, if you're using uh, Avro as a contract between different systems, then it's important that you might have different versions of that capability in production at the same time. Imagine a situation where you have thousands of publishers, producers of information that are integrating with some kind of an integration hub. Well, you will never be able to ensure 100% version compatibility between all of these different systems. They will never be on the same version. Having said that, you might be able to engineer it in such a way that all of the different versions that are being used are still compatible with one another. Both backward and forward compatibility is a very strong feature of the Avro technology. It makes it super interesting for integration services, as I just explained. Very often, these types of schema versions will be published in a schema registry, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit, but schema registries is where people can look at these different evolving versions, which of course enables the goal of maximizing maximizing compatibility because you're decoupling the life cycle of publishers and consumers. There are specific guidelines and best practices for this, which we will not be covering in this tutorial. In the Hackolade Studio, you will find a visual design environment for the Avro schema that allows you to anticipate the evolution of the schema. It allows for uh, message validation, uh, optimizing the message payloads. It allows you to um, enable compatibility and interoperability, and of course, integrate with the Confluent or other schema registry. This, of course, enables and promotes the reuse of the schema despite the limited official specification and documentation that is out there. So we include support for things like Avro namespace references and Confluent schema registries, schema references, or union schemas. So it's a graphical Avro schema design tool, which you can also use to import existing Avro schemas. Different schema registries are supported, Confluence uh, schema registry, Azure Event Hubs schema registry, Pulsar schema registry and other Confluent schema registry API compatible registries can also be added to the Hackolade Studio. We support both forward and reverse engineering of the Avro schema into these registries, but we can also work with simpler uh, object storage providers for a completely different use case. Right? We can reverse engineer the Avro files that have, have been stored in those object storage providers like S3 or ADLS, uh, which contain data lake files basically, and then reverse engineer the schema of those files and include them in our Hackolade model. 
we maintain all of the references, also the recursive references between the elements in the Avro schema. Right, so the outputs then are your ERD, your hierarchical view, I mentioned those two earlier, but also the syntactically correct schema generation for both users that have a limited technical knowledge or developers that want to improve their productivity and their quality of their work. It's also very useful, of course, that thanks to our polyglot data modeling capabilities, you can actually convert the uh, other targets models, uh, like open API models or relational databases or NoSQL databases, and you can convert them into an Avro schema super easily. So the integration with the schema registry is through a RESTful interface, right? Um, we will show that a little bit later where developers can publish their schemas. Um, uh, you can host this yourself or use one of the cloud capabilities. And it's, uh, you know, it's a native capability where uh, you can forward or reverse engineer the schema in the registry. It allows for all of these references, schema references, and union schemas. With that, well, let's uh, take a look at the short little demo, and then we can take it from there. All right, let's uh, give you guys a little bit of a tour here. Please do review our website and the documentation. Um, there's going to be some really great information there for sure. But also, I would like to highlight that we'll be looking at a specific um, demo environment here that we've set up for the Confluent Cloud. It's just a uh, online free version of the schema registry. There's a couple of schemas in here, but we'll be adding some more to it using our Hackerlate toolset. So what we'll do now is we'll create a new Avro schema. And in the schema, we're going to first create a namespace, right? So this is customer. And now within the namespace, I'll add a record, customer address. And within the, within the uh, record, I'm going to add a nested structure, which is the address. And the nested structure is going to look like this. I'll add a field here, which is a string, which has the street. It has the house number. It has the zip code. It has the city and also, of course, the country. These are the elements that we'll be adding into our Avro schema. And obviously, um, when I save this, right, I'll save it into a particular directory over here, overwrite what I already have. When I save this, uh, obviously you will see that I also have all of the uh, hierarchical capabilities, right? So I see what the structure is like in a hierarchical view, but I can also say, well, you know, I'd actually like to forward engineer this into either a file format or an entry into the schema registry over here, right? So this is the registry right now. I've got our four schemas in there. I'd like to add one here, right? So the Avro schema, schema is valid, as you can tell here. And I can say, okay, let's apply this to my Kafka schema registry. I have the connectivity set up. Let's connect to it. And boom, now the script actually added the schema to the registry over here, right? So if I refresh it, you should see the customer address over here. So what I'll do next is I'll actually try to evolve this schema using our uh, Hackerlate Studio. And I'll, uh, for example, add another field here, right? Which is a test field. Um, save this again and do the same thing. I'd like to forward engineer this to our Avro schema registry. And I'll already warn you, we are going to get an error here, right? So it's going to say that the schema is being registered because it's incompatible with the schema for the same topic and the compatibility requirements. Okay, let's go and check this one out then. And over here, you will now see that there is a specific compatibility mode um, that has been set up, which is backward compatible. So when you change something to the registry, and uh, you forward engineer the Avro schema based on our model into the schema registry, then of course it's going to check for some compatibility. It has to be backward compatible in this case, which obviously is not the case because I have created this particular additional field here, which is a required field. So what I'll do now is I'll either do one of two things. I can either go into my schema registry and loosen the uh, compatibility settings and set them to none, of course. But, you know, the smarter thing to do is to actually look at some of um, Hackley's advanced features, which is that for an Avro schema, you know, this is the Avro schema page, we can actually create something called a union type which is a really great uh, capability that allows you to deal with these incompatibilities in a structured way uh, and allow for both cases to happen. So um, let's see what we'll do here is we'll go into Hackerlate and say, well, this test field that we have over here, it's actually not going to be a string, but it's actually going to be a null value that is not required. Um, and then we'll actually have the possibility for it to be empty or to be a string. So. Let me show you how to do that, right? So we have two values that are possible here now, null or a string, 
right? So these, both of these are now possible. I'll just save this. Uh, you see here in the test field, it's a multi now, and I'll go and forward engineer that to my Arbor Schema registry, right? And uh, you will see that now the compatibility requirements are met and the new model has been applied successfully. So let's see here, right? So now I have two versions of the model. Uh, I can actually go and look at that, compare the versions. These are the, the, this is the new version, right? With the default null where two possibilities are available, right? Uh, null or string. Right, so that's great. I just wanted to uh, illustrate how you can use Hackolade's uh, capabilities to the maximum, including some of uh, the advanced Avro data types. Obviously, some of these model comparisons that we showed in the um, Confluent Schema Registry environment, you can also do those comparisons in Hackolade, but it's always good to have multiple options. That concludes our little demo, and so therefore I am going to return to this particular slide to recommend that you read up on some of this material, uh, look at the Hackalade Studio online documentation, the blog, but also the books that we've created recently, there's more coming, um, and of course you are very welcome to follow us on the socials and try the tool for free. You can just download Hackalade Studio and get started for free. Great, that wraps up this part of the tutorial. I hope this was useful, and I wish you a wonderful rest of your day.